run, a very basic marble run. We're going to use Blender to do the physics, but we're going to use Fusion to do the modeling. There are other ways of doing this. I'll leave that to you. Uh, so I guess the first thing to do really is to build our base. Okay, so we uh, create the base first and then we start to raise up the pillars. Now we obviously want uh, the marble to start high up and then roll down. So that's why we create a pillar. How you create this is up to you, but just remember that you really want that marble to start rolling down. So uh, having a ramp is probably your best bet for the beginning. Now in this one, I just created a tube and then I create a line and slice, use that to slice that body. And that way I don't need to replicate anything. Um, I just cut it straight through the middle at an angle and then I use that second part of the wedge as a step. Again, that's just because I was um, being a bit lazy. I wanted to create a marble run as quickly as possible for this video. Now the next stage gets a little bit more complicated. I want to create rails that are tubes that are actually moving on three axes. And in order for me to do that, I need to create two construction planes, one at the very top and one at the very bottom of these rails. And then I draw uh, the two beginnings of the rails and the two ends or the terminals of the rails. Once I've done that, I switch to a 3D sketch. And if you look on the, the uh, right hand side when you're doing the sketch palette, when you're saying new sketch, you'll actually see that it's an option there. So uh, when I'm clicking that, it's best to have a beginning and an end. So all I do is I snap to one of the lines and then I snap to the other. And that gives me this uh, 3D uh, sketch. And now all I need to do is create those, um, those paths and then turn those into uh, pipes or tubes. Now once they're done, I can now move those into place. Um, you'll notice that there's no support on the second uh, part. And again, this is just me demonstrating. So if you were to 3D print this, you'd most definitely need something, unless you're gonna make those two rails out of metal. And of course, if you do that, instead of um, 3D printing those, you would make those holes and um, then bend those in actual metal and slot the metal rails into those holes. Okay, so the next part, or nearly the last part now, is the actual bowl, and that's just to stop the marble from running off the base. Now I create the marble. I wouldn't, um, but for this demonstration, we need to because we're trying to simulate the physics. Um, in actual fact, you would be, of course, using a, a real marble or ball bearing in this case. Now, when we're moving the sphere for the simulation, it's important to have that so it's not touching anything, but it's in the right place and it's just above. Uh, the next part is to combine everything that you need. So there should really be one base. Uh, any other moving parts should be separate and then we must turn those into components. So just right click and create component from body. I'm just gonna demonstrate where it's gonna go. So that's going down the ramps, round the rails and then into the bolt. Okay, so the next part is actually from experience. I know that as the ball travels down the rails, it's uh, gonna just, the inertia is gonna keep it going and it's gonna fly off. So what I'm doing is creating a, a little barrier um, on the base and then I'm gonna extrude that up just to stop the marble from uh, coming off to the other end. Once I've done that, I've gotta turn that new body into a component and then I've got to combine those two components together. And then the next part is to simply take each component and save it as a mesh. And in this case, we're using the OBJ files. So we've seen that Fusion can simulate physics if we animate it, but it can't actually simulate physics based on data. It seems to crash. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Blender. Now, Blender can be downloaded for free. It's available for Mac and Windows. So once Blender's open, you're going to be presented with the uh, box. Now you can actually go and delete that box by pressing X and then just uh, click the delete. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to file and we're going to import those two OBJ files. And I put those on the desktop, so that was the base and the ball. And you'll see that the, uh, the scale is completely out. So the first thing we need to do 
is we need to do two things. We need to rotate it 90 degrees. Um, so if we just go to the X and turn that 90 degrees into zero, and we'll do that for both the components. And then we're gonna scale it down. Now I scale it from one to 0 0.1, and I then press tab, 0 0.1 tab, and so on. And I do that again for both those components, the ball and the base. Once we've done that, we can zoom in. And the next part is to reset the origin. Now this happens because when I exported the OBJ, the 0, 0, 0 was um, where the cursor's pointing, but that meant that the center of mass is now no longer in the actual body itself. So secondary click the body of the ball, uh, set the origin, and make sure you set that to the center of mass of volume. Once you've done that, then um, we should actually have some expected results. So the next part is to assign the physical properties to each of those components. So uh, if we just select the physics, and then we're going to select the sphere, and we're going to turn that rigid body into active, set the mass to about 100 grams, and set it as a sphere. We're going to set its friction to about 0 0.01. We'll also select it some um, collision sensitivity to 0 0.01 and then you can tweak the dynamics and rotation. I've set the keyframe at the end to 1000, it was 250, I've put that to 1000. And now the next stage is to set the, set the physics of the base. And to do that we're making it passive, it's going to be a mesh. You'll set your friction to 0 0.01 as well and your margin to 0 0.01. So without further ado, we should be able to just press, press play and watch as that marble runs uh, down that slope, round the rails, being protected by the barrier, down the second slope and into the bowl. Now that's proving the concept, so theoretically you should be able to now 3D print those STLs because you drew them accurately in Fusion. And I wouldn't 3D print the ball itself. Um, what you'd want to do is uh, get a marble or a ball bearing and uh, adjust the dimensions accordingly in your fusion. You can also add renders and you can bake it so that you can then animate it and send it out as a video file.